Hello, I'm Robert Muth and I'm a PhD student at Technical University in Berlin, supervised by Professor Florian Schorsch. Today I present our empirical analysis of on-chain voting with smart contracts. First, I'll introduce the state of the art of that topic in order to explain our motivation. Since it is mainly an empirical analysis, we've automated most of it. In this presentation, I will show you how we use out-of-the-shelf data analysis tools that use cloud technologies to tackle the high data requirements of popular permissionless blockchains. With that, I'll present our key insights like how many votings we found, how much funding they manage, and what trend we can derive from that data. This is the first big part of our work. The second part analyzes the feasibility aspects of small-scale and large-scale votings, for instance, with 2,000 voters compared to 100,000 voters. For both analysis, so speaking of the blockchain analysis and the feasibility analysis, we concentrate on Ethereum mainnet, but also take a look at Bitcoin and Dash. At the end, I'll present our conclusions regarding to the relevance of blockchain-based voting. Transparency, verifiability and self-enforcing agreements like coin and token transfers make it tempting to implement votings with blockchains. Actually, we found more than 3000 smart contracts that implement some kind of voting functionality. Together, they hold almost 12,000 Ether, which was about 4.5 million US dollar at the time of writing. Altogether, all found smart contracts manage almost 30,000 Ether. Given these numbers, we can already see the importance of blockchain voting based on a monetary perspective. Now, I just want to jump into the technical part by introducing our data analysis pipeline. But first, some background information in how to find a smart contract in the Ethereum blockchain without the source codes. A smart contract contains functions that basically consist of a name and its parameters. Like so. The name is vote and it takes an integer value for the voting option. In Ethereum, neither the name nor the parameter times are available in clear text, but hashed with key check. That means that calling a function of a smart contract requires prior knowledge about its structure. So in order to find voting smart contracts, we have to scan all smart contracts for hashed signatures that belong to voting. We therefore collected all kinds of function signatures beforehand. We searched for functions that names contained voting, vote or ballot. As a result, we ended up with about 1.5 thousand signatures. We generated the signatures based on the EIP1202, which provides a standardized interface for votings. We also queried signatures from the 4-byte directory that offers a public database with known signature to hash mappings. We also searched for smart contract implementations on GitHub manually. Our analysis pipeline then is split into three parts. First, we have an initial pre-processing for collecting relevant function signatures on the left-hand side. Second, we use a Python Jupyter Notebook for managing the whole analysis process. The analysis uses SQL statements on a relational database. We use Google BigQuery for both, running isolated analysis and a source to the Ethereum mainnet. It is of course possible to do that locally with the Ethereum client Geth and an Ethereum ETL pipeline. The initialization is just a very time-consuming process. Okay, now let's dive into the data. First, we search for smart contracts that have at least one voting signature and insert them into a new table voting contracts. We therefore query the public Ethereum dataset with all current smart contract instances. We only select the ones that contain at least one of the signatures that are in our pre-processed table function SIG hashes. We now have a list of addresses to potential voting smart contracts. Next, we analyze how many signatures are present. We are again query the addresses and count the signatures with a SQL grouping function. Here you can see the complicated looking intersection join, but that is only because of the usage of array types. 
As a result, we get a mapping of smart contract addresses and the number of implemented voting signatures. We actually found about 5,000 deployed instances. As it turns out, we have a problem with false positives, like a smart contract that contains a function that signature's hash value does not belong to a voting at all. Like here, voting underscore var and total supply share the same hash value. As we have too many signatures to check manually, we decided to limit our analysis to smart contracts that contain at least two voting function signatures. We therefore reduced the number of indicated smart contracts from approximately 5,000 to a little bit more than 3,000. As we found the first voting in October 2017, we encountered more than 1.2 million transactions to the smart contracts until the end of 2020. We analyzed the transaction values, so the attached Ether coins. After sorting the belonging smart contracts by their balances, we can see a long tail distribution here. In fact, only a small portion of the smart contracts hold the majority of all Ether balances. In numbers, for example, you see here the top four voting smart contracts. They hold between about 2 million US dollars and 200,000 US dollars right now. For more details here, please see our paper. For deriving a trend of blockchain-based voting, we analyzed the activity for each year separately. With the debut of the DAO in 2016, we encountered an increased interest which reached its peak in 2018. Maybe due to the DAO hack, the interest by activity decreased constantly in both number of contract deployments and related transactions. But if we again look at the fundings and balances of the contracts, we also see a decrease beginning with 2016 but the overall balances, so the sum of all deposits minus the withdrawals, remain almost constant. Concluding, when we compare both graphs, we observe a current decrease of discrete activity, both by contract deployments and related transactions, but monetary activity remains constant. Now, the second analysis part, the feasibility analysis. We first analyzed the scalability properties of voting with blockchains. Based on our prior analysis results, we evaluated two scales. Small scale with processing 2000 votes and large scale with processing 100,000 votes. We also took a look at the respective transaction costs. In the paper, you can find the analysis for Ethereum mainnet, Bitcoin and the Dash governance by blockchain platform as well. Now we'll take a look at Ethereum, therefore I introduce some basic notation. Mu is the number of votes we evaluate, so for the small and large scale dimensions. N then presents the minimum number of blocks needed for the votes. Delta is the time it needs to process the votes calculated by the number of blocks and the corresponding block generation rate. Finally, with the gas limit per block i, we can calculate the maximum number of votes a block can contain. <clears throat> Putting in numbers, we end up with the following lower bounded model-based analysis. 2000 votes do not seem to cause any problems regarding the feasibility with all durations under a few minutes. Please have a look in our paper for more details on the different implementations. We then repeated the calculations for large-scale voting with 100,000 votes. You can clearly see the increased durations. Ethereum, for instance, needs at least between 44 minutes and one and a half hour. But as the model only gives you a lower bound with not considering others' traffic, we again analyze the blockchains. We analyzed residual capacities of the blockchain, meaning the block gas limit and free gas due to others' transactions dynamics. We analyzed the capacities over many time spans and calculated the medians of the needed blocks and durations. Again, 
the small-scale votings do not appear to be problematic. On the other hand, the durations for larger scale increase at a level which could make ad hoc votings at least infeasible. Ethereum and Bitcoin implementations need all more than three hours. As this also gives you lower boundaries, all transactions would have to be submitted and processed in unrealistic perfect order. Finally, we took a look into the economic efficiency of blockchain-based voting. For Ethereum, we measured the medium gas and gas price for our analyzed voting instances. At the time of writing, we expected a cost of vote between 8 cents, US cents, and 60 cents as transaction costs. Concluding, despite online voting and blockchain voting faces many security, anonymity, privacy, and other challenges, we could find a significant number of blockchain-based votings. The amount of managed funds and activity indicates a current relevance of blockchain votings. However, our feasibility studies reveal potential for improvement like scalability issues. For the future, we are going to reuse our data analysis pipeline for other use cases as well, such as decentralized finance platforms. But see related work in our paper for similar approaches. We are also investigating more qualitative metrics such as how anonymous voting implementations are or which security features they implement. You can find our analysis pipeline on GitHub. Also, the results in the paper which are generated with the Jupyter Notebook are uploaded to Google Collab. Please let me know if you have any questions and thank you for listening.